Thank you so much. Uh, it's great to be here, even though we're uh, going virtual today, uh, or at least augmented. I'm Robert Brown with the Cognizant Center for the Future of Work. Uh, and I want to talk today uh, about some research that we've done uh, tying the future of work to the real reality of augmented reality, what's really going on out there uh, in enterprise businesses. Um, and it's funny, with the advent of COVID-19, you know, we always like to say the future of work is always uh, in the future, it starts tomorrow. But I think we've all been living through the last weeks and months that the future of work is here now. And we think going through the remainder of the decade, a lot of it is going to be done in AR. And it's interesting to think about where we are. For years, my team in the Cognizant Center for the Future of Work has been talking about digital transformation as sort of a, a way out of the woods, so to speak, in terms of uh, the malaise of as is uh, approaches to work and, and business processes. And now with the advent of the virus, it's sort of like a forest fire is sort of taking a, a torch to the work of the now and forcing all of us, I think, in many ways to recreate uh, the way that we do work uh, in new ways that maybe represent something of green shoots that we'll see on the other side. And I think for, for many of us that are attending AWE, we've been using uh, online work from home tools like Zoom and uh, other WebEx uh, approaches for a long, long time, but many haven't. And I think one of the things that people are coming to grips with is there's only so much that you can do with this flat screen in front of you from your home office, if you like. It's sort of Zoom, uh, doom and gloom. And in fact, uh, the New York Times, I'll steal some of their great data that they've had, uh, showed that uh, over the period of March and into the end of March, uh, just sort of the 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 the, the manifestly uh, greater amount of online presences that people are sort of forced into uh, day by day, and I think many people realize there's got to be a better way in terms of how uh, we do work. So again, in my team, our job is to think about um, uh, research that uh, sort of grounds our understanding of what's happening in the future of work, and we partnered with um, Oxford Economics, uh, as well as uh, did some uh, roundtable sessions at the Berkeley Haas School of Business uh, with senior leaders and executives to understand the current and expected dynamics of the AR market in their businesses and really get to the heart of this idea of what's the real reality of augmented reality. And so the first thing that we wanted to convey out of that research, or we, we discovered, I should say, is that uh, those that dismiss AR are doing it at their peril. We asked these 300 respondents when they expect augmented reality to be considered a mature technology that's accepted, established, and widespread use. And uh, as you can see with the pie chart on the left, it is proverbially standing on the fence. On the one hand, uh, almost half of those respondents think it'll be uh, 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 go time for, for augmented reality in the next 18 months to three years. That is to say, it's a mature technology. Uh, I was a Gartner analyst for about 15 years, and we used to do the hype cycles all of the time. And these are the people that really think it's come of age. The other half think it's going to be a little bit further out, three to five years. But interestingly, the pie chart that you see on the right, uh, the, the cohort that we call the pioneers, those that are those are companies that already have initial initiatives, not only rolled out, but in full production scale. And they're much more sanguine about the timing of AR. Uh, in fact, uh, three quarters of them think that will be a mature technology uh, in the next 18 months to three years. But as many of the attendees of Augmented World Expo uh, will rightly know, uh, part of this is almost like a, it's like a waiting for Guffman exercise. It really has to do with the technologies uh, that get rolled out and adopted at almost a consumer grade uh, level. And I think part of this goes into the enterprise view. Again, uh, one of the things that we gleaned from our research is that uh, the top and bottom line growth so that is to say cost savings as well as revenue gain in affected processes are using uh, for uh, augmented reality. Those are expected to be a cumulative 8.2% uh, in just a couple of short years. So you can really get into the dollars and cents of this, the pounds and pennies uh, that are at stake. And for many of us that are you know, regular attendees of Augmented World Expo, we see the, the, the use cases. We'll talk about a few in a moment. And you start to get into not only cost savings, but revenue gain. And I think after the virus, there's going to be so many uh, uh, desires for new avenues for uh, new revenue growth and new approaches to work uh, that many businesses haven't really just been, been trying at all yet. Um, 
And I think one of the things that we run up against uh, when we talk to CIOs um, is that, well, you know, augmented reality, you know, it's just a game thing, right? You know, what about that Pokemon Go? That's really sort of the question du jour. And, and it's funny, again, talking about my uh, previous life as a Gartner analyst, you know, this, something like this may seem as sort of a joke to CIOs today, but when we talked about cloud computing 20 years ago, it was the same thing. And one need only look at uh, AWS or even, you know, the Salesforce tower in San Francisco and realize that, you know, somebody like Mark Benioff has built that entire business on what was once sort of the dream of cloud computing not that long ago. So it's real, it's happening, and it's happening maybe faster than we even realized. And again, on that notion of, well, this is just a game thing, you know, I love this quote from John Riccatello of uh, Unity, uh, where you think about just the, the vast compute power of game engines like Unity or Epic Unreal Engine. This quote of his, you know, we call it a game engine, but really it's an animation interactive slash lighting slash physics slash pre presence engine. And it happens to also be what Audi needs. And it happens to be what the guys at the Large Hadron Collider also need the compute power needed to pull together vast amounts of imagery. And any business can really take advantage of that. So back to our data set with our respondent base of uh, 300 um, uh, enterprise senior executives, we asked them how important the following types of AR uh, suppliers and partners were gonna be moving forward in the next five years. And the number one response on the right-hand uh, side, surprise, surprise, or maybe not, for AWE uh, attendees is the gaming engines at 65%. Uh, so that's coming to pass very quickly. And you know, very close behind that is the media and entertainment suppliers. So that might be the likes of companies like ILM X Lab uh, or other specialists like Weta Digital down in New Zealand. And so it's gonna take a cast of characters to pull this off, uh, but very clearly the lessons learned from the gaming space are being transposed if you like into the enterprise business uh, space. So one of the key takeaways for my quick presentation today is this notion of rewriting business processes as journeys is now enterprise's new key competency, whether they know it or not. Uh, so we think about business processes as linear point A to point B uh, journeys. Uh, and in fact, we sort of asked this as a part of our research around the real reality of augmented reality. Uh, the number one response we asked uh, uh, where AR would have the biggest impact uh, was lead to substantial redesign of my business processes as AR journeys and flows. Uh, and so that's critical, thinking about business process transformation uh, with that uh, in, in mind is absolutely critical. And I think I lost my PowerPoint presentation. Oh, there we go. All right. So carrying on. So that's an absolutely critical lesson, right? They get, they get it. And the, mes the message and the memo has been received. So when we think of, from a cognizant center for the future of work standpoint about uh, processes as journeys, this is what we mean. For us, and really for every business out there and businesses that we work with, every business process has a plot or a main character that moves through time and space, particularly for business processes involving people. So just to give some examples in insurance, uh, you know, property and casualty insurance, it's the claim is uh, the main character in that process. In trade, it's trade order. For auto manufacturing, it's the car. You know, many of you are familiar with the upskill uh, IO uh, case study that uh, Boeing has for wiring harnesses. So that gives you an example of how things move from point A to point B in linear journeys as sort of a plot. And in fact, we've given a lot of thinking around this notion of the six elements of an AR narrative journey, what we call this flow. Every flow has an intro, it has an outro, again, sort of borrowing from some of the uh, best thinking of the games sector. And then in between that, what's the genre of that process? Is, the, is that journey a personal journey or is it for work? Is it education? Is it educational in nature, entertainment, creativity? An example here, the genre might be, you know, if you're on Bourbon Street in New Orleans, are you there as a tourist and wanting historical information? Or are you there as a part of public works and need to dig up that street and through the AR cloud have all of that data at your disposal? We think about the plot and sort of the central actions of that process. Who does what? What happens and how does it happen? And then sort of the vignette or skin, the overlay of that process. What are the set pieces, the mood, the time? Is the process participant an active or a passive, et cetera? Given a lot of thinking around that in 
uh, the forerunner white paper that I wrote uh, to the real reality of augmented reality was called Augmenting the Reality of Everything. So read that for more information on our thinking around um, uh, the elements of uh, processes as journeys. And again, in a, you know, the real reality of a COVID world, we think about just what's happening to retail and just sort of uh, municipal space in general, right? We know there's going to be a lot of dying retail mall spaces that was already happening. COVID is sort of accelerating that death spiral of uh, big box retail as we know it. You start to see the examples out there, companies like Virtualities in Salt Lake City, uh, which is really uh, uh, taking some steps to uh, uh, transforming mall space into a safe space for immersion. Uh, if any of you have been to Santa Fe and have been to Meow Wolf, I had the pleasure of being down there several months ago and meeting with some of their XR principals. Uh, they essentially took an old dilapidated bowling alley that was owned by George R.R. R. Martin, Game of Thrones fame, transposed it as a safe space for very tactile, uh, real immersion overlaid with a lot of XR as well. And in fact, it's the opposite of linear. You can sort of go in any direction. It's absolutely fascinating. And also in the, uh, in the New Mexico area, Electric Playhouse. In fact, they just moved uh, their space into an old Staples uh, facility. And it's sort of different from augmented reality as we might think about it wearing a, a head-mounted display. Electric Playhouse overlays augmented reality on the walls and it's sort of immersive video games that you can play with your friends when uh, God willing come the day we can all physically be uh, together uh, with one another. It's a very cool model. And I think we're also seeing this use of AR and business functions move from sort of cool gimmicks like the uh, augmented reality labels of uh, 19 Crimes Wine to core competencies in business processes like healthcare. So this is the AccuVane uh, uh, AR technology. Again, you know, we think about first line responders in healthcare, AccuVane helps you find your veins, as many of you uh, know. So thinking about, you know, not need, needing to have a phlebotomist repeatedly poke your grandma in uh, a time of contagion uh, is, is really work that matters and how we might use AR to transpose that work. So the future of work, as it will, uh, is that it's going to get ARized through the remainder of this decade. And in fact, we've done a lot of thinking about what those jobs might look like. In fact, many of you watching this may in fact have the title of augmented reality journey builder today. But we did this report, 21 Jobs of the Future, which was written up as if they were job descriptions, JDs, over the next 10 years. And we talked about the role of the augmented reality journey builder, sort of connecting people. What would that entail? And it's way more than just sort of goofy mocap actors that you know are sort of covered in the proverbial ping pong balls. We're thinking about, you know, a century ago, we had, you know, bricklayers that sort of built the infrastructure of the great industrial cities of the world. Now with the AR cloud, we need data overlayers. We need creatives, you know, maybe even uh, having a, a background rooted in something uh, like improv acting. Uh, and it conjures up ideas like this. In fact, just the last couple of days, there's been some news about, uh, you know, if Tesla perhaps had invented Pokemon Go. Uh, and you could switch every day in your morning commute. If you're a fan of Star Wars or a fan of Game of Thrones or a fan of Downton Abbey, you could overlay your world in sort of these vernacular vignettes or skins. Uh, it conjures up ideas of things perhaps like uh, a Spotify for your AR overlays or a Pandora for your AR overlays, depending on what your mood is uh, of the day. So a lot of people have talked about this, but I think it's applied to linear business processes and journeys we're just starting to scratch the surface. And if, by the way, Tesla could unpick the Gordian knot of morning commute traffic, so much the better. So when you think about XR in all of its manifest possibilities, we're really tapping into human creativity and experience. And a lot of people have been talking about how we're moving out of the services economy and into the experience economy. And I think COVID-19 and so much of the disruption that we've seen is really accelerating uh, that. So this notion of AR journey builders and experience conductors, you know, roles like these that we wrote about in 21 Jobs of the Future, they're going to become essential uh, to the experience economy of tomorrow. Uh, if William Shakespeare had the quote, uh, you know, it might be something like all the world's a journey uh, and we are merely viewers. And it starts with that business process transformation of processes as journeys. So the thing to do now is to place multiple small bets. Many of you watching this are already doing that. You're working with companies that are doing that, but starting now is critical. We give this advice to the CIOs that we work with at Cognizant all the, the, all the time. 
you got to recognize that AR is a genuine game changer for the business and for business processes as we know them. You've got to pick their spots, write the narrative journey using AR, and help users help themselves through iteration. Again, that's sort of the starting small, just like any digital transformation, but then make time for scale. Uh, hits will pay for misses. And then just a shameless plug for my research, um, read The Real Reality of Augmented Reality by, by me and be ready to be ARized. I'll leave you with this quote from uh, music producer Brian Eno um, that um, whatever you now find weird or ugly or uncomfortable and nasty about a new medium will surely become its signature. Uh, CD distortion, the jitteriness of digital video, the crap sound of 8-bit, the distorted guitar sound is the sound of something too loud for the medium supposed to carry it. The excitement of grainy film or bleached out black and white is the excitement of witnessing events too momentous for the medium assigned to, the, to record them. And that kind of feels about where we are right now. The real reality of augmented reality is it's going to be huge uh, as it's accelerated now with the disruptions that we've seen in the macro environment. And for a lot of businesses and enterprise processes, taking this advice to heart that it's a journey, right? And the journey is the process. And if you do it right, your processes will become journeys. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank you very much. And I think now we're gonna turn it to uh, time for Q&A. So with that, let the discussion begin. Hi there, Robert. That was such a fascinating presentation. I love the Zoom, Doom and Gloom quote. Oh, thank you, Ravi. I no, it's uh, it, it, we're, we're living this real time, right? Talk about the future of work, but the future of work is now. So AR is a big part of it. Right. I I, I would start with the question that we just got from Nicole Lazaro. She's asking, how would AR journey builders be different than non AR journey builders? Is there a comparable city designers, theme park designers? Any thoughts on that, Robert? Well, I, I think it, it it takes a real understanding of the, the powers of of immersive technologies like like augmented reality. But the technology can only take you so far. So I think what it requires is a rethinking of the work and the rethinking of the work process. Um, if you apply this to to sort of enterprise business processes, new disruptive technologies, whether it's things um, like uh, uh, you know, robotic process automation, we've been hearing a lot about for the last five years. You think about the power of other technologies like digital platforms, it changes the mindset and what the, the power of those technologies can do. So the AR journey builder role is going to be critical to understanding what the nature of the wearable can do and how it basically, you know, almost like if you can imagine like, like you know, melting that process, figuratively speaking, and then reforging it in, uh, in the vernacular flow of what AR I uh, can do. So, you know, what, what may now take 15 steps as a business process with AR, you know, you can flatten it down to two. Uh, and so that's, I, I think, the mentality that AR journey builders need to bring uh, through their knowledge of what these technologies can do. Absolutely. I will not, I work as a, I'm founder of a VR startup, so I wouldn't let this conversation end before asking you uh, your insights on VR. I know you've talked a lot about AR, but anything that you could quickly share with us on what, what do you think about VR? Um, I think that it, it's ironic because the, the long game for the last several years, let's say last two, three, four years, has really been on, you know, augmented reality is going to be the game changing technology because you don't seal out real reality. You interact with the real, real reality. The irony of COVID-19 is that, you know, for a short period of time anyway, we have been sort of sealed in and walled off from the real world. And so the applicability of virtual reality in this sort of homebound environment is, is manifestly clear. And I, I think about this medium that you and I are working on, you know, right now, you take it off of the flat 2D, you know, zoom, doom and gloom, right? Taking it off of the zoom room, and really being able to immerse almost like you know the the trope with awe attendees is you know do we get the holodeck when do we get the holodeck when do we get the, the you know the jedi council we could be in your meetings and i think after the virus this is something we've talked a lot about in my team you, know, you are going to see uh trivial business travel go down you know this notion that hey i went to sydney for a three-day conference it used to be hey that's cool you went to sydney for a three-day conference post-virus, it's going to be like, you went to Sydney for a three-day conference. How dumb could you be? 
when we have technologies <laughs> like virtual reality or you know indeed Absolutely. augmented reality to help, to help take that to a different level Absolutely. A lot of good comments coming on such an inspiring presentation. I, I have another question for you. Of the 21 jobs of the future you mentioned, which one is the most surprising or novel that you could share with us? Something that would surprise um, us. I mean, I think for this audience, the coolest one is, is definitely the augmented reality journey builder because it describes a lot of the jobs that people do already have and, and will have. And so sort of evangelizing those for you know, others and, you know, businesses, entertainment, work, play, and everything in between. So by 2030, you know, it'll be the, it'll be the hottest job of 2030. Let's put it that way. I, I think one thing I would say is having gone through 21 jobs of the future, and then we followed it up with 21 more jobs of the future. We just released like 21 HR jobs of the future, like this morning. So it's a franchise of thinking from my team that keeps building. What we're finding is the speed with, with which some of those jobs of the future are be, have become the jobs of the now, that's really surprising. And so what I would say, you know, for attendees, um, check it, you know, all of our stuff is at futureofwork.com. Uh, you can read those reports and, uh, and you get a sense of, you know, things are, are coming to pass maybe faster than, than we even realized. Fascinating stuff, uh, Robert. Really appreciate your presentation, your time to answer the questions. Um, I'm afraid we're running out of time. So thank you so much for sharing this with us. Thanks, Ravi. I really appreciate it. Good to be with you.